Hey guys, all right, well today we're gonna to try to start preparing to install the rails. In the last video, we installed all of our datums. And I showed you the rod technique to transfer this straight edge from the machined dovetail. We know this area here is machined. We can transfer that by using a rod and we'll just rest our one, two, three block up against this. And then that way we can line up our datums. Just because we're not real sure about this tip here, how straight it is. However, what about this surface here that we're going to be resting our rail on? How do we know that it's not flat and true? Well, we really don't know. Uh, I would hope that because it's a machine surface that it would be straight. However, the only really the only way to check that is with a surface plate. Now, I don't have a surface plate, and I'm sure most of the home hobbyists won't have a surface plate as well. So, what my plan is, I'm going to check this surface against this side on the X, Y, and Z. I'll check both of them and just kind of compare. And then I'm going to check it between this edge here, this surface, and this surface, and see what kind of variances I have. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they probably machined this and this at the same setup. However, we don't know, so I figure if there's any kind of variances, we can kind of see that by just checking it. Now, installing the rails directly on top of this, my plan was originally to just mount this and then make this rail the same height as this rail. And as long as they're both the same height uh, between the two, I think the tolerance is, I'll have to double check, but I think the tolerance is 0 .0018, so almost two thousandths of an inch between the height between here and here. And now that's based upon the distance between the center of this rail and the center of this rail. Mine are around 8 inches. Um, the formula is in the inst installation guide. So what I want to do is just check between this rail and this rail and try to get them as parallel and the height the same all the way down. Now when I check this with the indicator between this side and this side, I'm going to try to find wherever the high spot is. Now, by resting this, by resting my indicator on a on this one, two, three block, that's going to prevent at least three inches of little dips and if there's any kind of little valleys and high points across the three inches. I'm going to check it first like that, and then I'll come back and see if I can find something a little bit longer, and then that will span a greater distance and help prevent uh, those little peaks and valleys as well. And I'm just going to check it and see where the highest point is. And if I need to, I can always shim under the rail to bring the low points up to uh, the same height. I'm thinking that's the best route to go. Really, that's the only thing that I can think of uh, to get it as flat as possible. Now, in preparation for installing the rail, I saw a gentleman on either Instagram or YouTube, and I can't remember uh, the name. He was building a CNC router, and he just machined some little drill bushings so that he could uh, drill all the mounting holes. That was The drill bushing was to allow him to do that and keep everything centered. It's a great idea, and so I'm going to try to borrow that. What I've done is I've taken a bolt and I've just turned it down uh, so that the shank here is the right diameter and drilled a hole through the center. And then now we're going to just use that as our drill bushing. And so we'll just hold that down there and drill through it. I'll probably end up taping it to a wrench or something and then that way I can just move right along. But I'll clamp it in place and then 
uh, drill the mounting holes. That should keep me nice and lined up and centered. Uh, just turn this down on the lathe. Okay, so I've taken a bolt and I've just cut it down. And now we're just going to turn it and bore it. And that this one's going to be for the 20 millimeter rails. I've already done one with the smaller bolt for the 15 millimeter rails. Now I want to try to get this piece in there as centered as possible. that off. Uh, the length on that is she needs to be less than 8.39 millimeters which I think we're pretty close there. Should be good. We can check that later. And we need to be 9.5 millimeters diameter. Starting off at, let's see where we're at. About 9.98, so we just need to take a little bit off to get it down to 9.5. symmetrical there so let's see all right we're at 9.7 we need to be at 9.5 Looks like 9.49, so we should be good right there. Should slide right in. I'm going to just uh, knock this corner off right here. All right. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to center drill it. for a 4.2 millimeter drill bit I'm going to be using an 11 64th which is about 4.3 for steel it calls for 4.5 and for aluminum it calls for 4.2 so this is 4.3 
right, so now we have our drill bushing for the 20 millimeter rails and the 15 millimeter rails. Not very difficult to make. All right, fits in there nice. Hold that with a wrench, and uh, now we can just use this bushing to make sure that we get our holes drilled center. I also need to machine some kind of clamping mechanism to kind of push this rail up against the datum. So what I've got here is some half inch by half inch angle and I'm just going to machine this down so that it's just a little bit wider than this gap here that I space here and then I'll bore holes through here and drill and tap into the table to kind of clamp that in place. I'll do that on both sides. That's what I'll do for the x-axis. For the Y, they're pretty much flush with the edge here, so I may just use some uh, some type of washer and just bore some holes and use the washer to press up against that. And I'll use something similar to this on the Z axis too, because it is inset just a little bit. Now, let me see if I can get the indicator set up and we'll just try to check some of these surfaces just to see where I'm at and see how flat these surfaces are. All right, so I've got the indicator on here and I'm just checking between here and here. I'm also going to let it run on this surface, which also appears to be machined, and then we'll double check and see if there's any variances between the two. So I've got this lined up at zero, and you're gonna notice that the, the needle's gonna come around here and this is actually low here, and, and it gets higher as we go along. Let me see if I can move this and get a good camera angle as well. Not focusing on that there. All right, let's go back. You can see right about the last four or five inches there. Oh, it came off, sorry. The last four or five inches here. So I would say it's about 15, 0 0.0015, 0 0.0018, somewhere around in there. But it's mainly just on these last four inches here. So now what I could do is when I mount my rail, I can just put shims along here and try to straighten that out. But I'm going to do a bunch of checks here. I'm going to now move from this side to this side and check it. And then I'll check from this uh, this rail here and check it just just to make sure that we're uh, getting consistent results. All right, so let me get set up and do some more checks. All right, well, after doing several checks, I've came to the conclusion that this surface right here. Is not a good machine surface even though it appears to be machined it appears that it dips down a little bit on both sides so you can't really use those to reference uh, anything so what I decided to do was just go and uh, go with my first results where this right here, since it was pretty consistent all along here, and then kind of dipped down just slightly here, I'm going to go with that. Now this does happen to be the master side, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and set my rail in place, bore those holes, Go ahead and set my rail in place and I'll start boring those holes 
and then once I get this rail uh, in place I'll temporarily mount it and then I'll double check it and if I have to come back I can just lift it up and put my shim under here and bolt it back down and get it nice and uh, straight or as straight as possible that's how I'm going to proceed uh, so I'm going to try to get some clamps made and then we'll start uh, I don't know if I'll start mounting this Y first or the Z or the X we'll just have to see well, I'm going to go ahead and start getting those mounted and uh, I guess that'll wrap up this video you just want to do a lot of this prep work and kind of get a game plan for how you're going to mount these rails uh, before you actually start boring the holes. Thanks guys for watching. Uh, please stay tuned for the next video. As I said before, I'm working a lot uh, at my 9 to 5, so all uh, these videos, hopefully I'll try to get one out every week as normal. But if not, be patient. I'll be back as... Uh, quickly as I can get to it. Thanks for watching guys. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not. If you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment if you got any ideas for how to check this more accurately please let me know. Thanks for watching and be safe.